Hey, welcome guys to the last day of our new content. We made it to day eight. And day eight is going to be all about, well, imagine that, right triangles. But this time we're going to be switching it up just a little bit because we're moving away from similarity and back to congruence. Now we know that word congruent means equal. When you have congruent right triangles, that means you have right triangles that have equal angles, equal sides, equal everything. And so we're going to be proving today, not that kind of proof, that two right triangles are congruent by applying ooh, these four brand new congruency statements. LA, LL, HL, and HA. We're going to talk about what those are here shortly. We're going to be applying those to, to be able to prove that two triangles are congruent. But first, I see why am I? I was really insulted and ashamed that nobody in my class knew what this stood for. This is in case you missed it. So this is going to be a little bit of a throwback Thursday, since you're hopefully watching this on Thursday. A little throwback Thursday action here. And we're going to throw it back to day number five. So back on day number five, we had a chance um, to discuss how if you drop this right here from the right angle to the hypotenuse, you could create similar triangles. Similar, similar, and similar. What do we call this that we dropped right here? That's right. That's an altitude. So in this case, if they want us to find X, they want us to find the altitude. Now think back, guys, to those two corollaries, those two formulas, those two proportions that we worked with on, uh, that would have been Monday. If you need to find the altitude, then we're going to need something called part one over the altitude, which in this case is X equal to the altitude, which again is x, over part 2. Part 1 over the altitude equals altitude over part 2. And so the question becomes, wait a minute, what's the rest of this triangle? Well, we know over here, if this is the right angle, then across from it, this will be the hypotenuse. This is going to be leg, we can call it leg 1. And we'll call this leg two. You could have called these either. But depending on what you called them, that's going to affect what these are. And some of you already know, this up here is the parts of our hypotenuse. So if this is leg one, that makes that part one. And of course, if this is 100, we know that's going to be 64 and part two. Okay. Now you've got everything you need, guys. Go ahead and see. If you can solve this problem for me, you can pause the video. <laughs> so we set it up. And as you cross multiply, guys, I want to give you a little pro tip. A little pro tip here. Look for perfect squares here because we're going to need to take the square roots. If you have perfect squares, which in this case we have two, Go ahead and take the square root, guys. Instead of doing 36, I mean, look what you'd have to deal with here. That's 2,304. Instead of having to try and do 2,304, break it down using the easy stuff. The square root of 36 is 6 times the square root of 64 is 8. And so your altitude is going to be 6 times 8. 48. Don't, don't do this way. You would have never guessed that, would, that that square root of that would eventually come down to 48. Unless, of course, you actually, you could always take the square root. That works, too. You can try taking the square root. But breaking down, that's a whole different story. So look for perfect squares that you can break down with. So number two, I'm going to let you guys handle most of this. The one thing I will let you know is that obviously we're going to find leg, well, let's call this leg one. And so if you need to find a leg, I'll leave you with this. It's going to be the adjacent part over 
the leg we're looking for equal to the leg we're looking for over the whole hypotenuse. So guys, let's see what you can do on number two. So check this out. Once again, when we set this up and cross multiply, look what I did here, guys. I said, wait a minute. 81 is a perfect square. The square root of 81 is 9. But unfortunately, 45 can still be broken down. 9 goes in to 45, and 9 is a perfect square. So this will be 9 times the square root of. 9 goes into 45, 5, that's a terrible 5, 5 times. The square root of 9 is 3. And then, of course, 9 times 3, 27, square root of 5. Um, and so that's the thing about this is that um, – Finding the legs a little bit tougher, in my opinion. Sometimes it requires a little bit more setup, a little bit more work. Uh, although we didn't have to find part two. That was nice. So, that'll take care of our throwback. Let's flip on back to... Conditions for congruence, postulate. So, this is what today is all about here, guys. This is what we came to the dance for. We want to figure out what are the conditions where we can establish some congruency. So before, we dealt with side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, and angle, angle, side. And these were how we could prove congruency for, these are regular triangles. But there are special congruency postulates for right triangles. And actually, guys, in my opinion, these are easier I want to give you, let's take a minute, look over these. Take some time to look over them, and when you're ready, you can unpause the video. Think about why I would think these are going to be a little bit easier. Go ahead and pause. So, hopefully a lot of you guys realized, wait a minute, all of these have right angles. Right angles, right angles, right angles. So, if they already share one angle, that's one less thing we have to worry about. That's one less angle we have to worry about in these. And so, for example, leg, leg. When you're talking about this one, uh, we know that that's going to be whenever. Obviously, we're not talking not the hypotenuse. This doesn't involve that. We're talking this leg um, and this leg. And so, of course, you've got a leg and a leg. And if these angles are the same and these legs are the same, then these legs will be the same. And, in fact, you've got side angle side if you wanted to think about it that way that's kind of what's going on here you've got like a side angle side action going on mm -hmm. number two hypotenuse angle so this kind this time you've got this and then maybe an angle like this an acute angle and the hypotenuse are congruent i'll go three there because usually you don't just go one for the height so think about what this would be this would be angle angle side Hey, so we're kind of seeing these up here, aren't we? Angle, angle, side, side, angle, side. How about this one down here? Leg angle. So that leg, and we'll say that angle. That angle and that leg. This will be angle, side, angle. And so we see that that's whenever we have one leg and an acute angle there. And then finally, this one's going to be a little different. Hypotenuse leg. If a hypotenuse and one leg are uh, congruent. So something like that. The problem is this would be angle, side, side. Which last time I checked is not a postulate. So this one's a bit unique. This one's, a, this one's kind of unique here. If you have a hypotenuse and a leg, then we know that third leg will also be congruent. And so you have congruent triangles. So here's what I'm going to let you guys do. We're going to have hypotenuse angle, hypotenuse leg, leg leg, and leg angle. 
here are our four congruency statements we can use. I'm going to let you guys go through. And for example, I'll do number one with you. So determine if the following triangles are congruent. If so, state the reason why. So we've got sides. And then, oh, don't they also share? How do we know this isn't the hypotenuse? Well, here's the height. We don't know anything about the hypotenuse, but we do know they share this leg and this leg being congruent. So that would be leg, leg. This leg and this leg are congruent. So try that, guys, for two, three, four, five, and six. Go right ahead. Okay. We've got a hypotenuse and a leg congruence. We've got an angle and the hypotenuse congruence, HA. We've got a hypotenuse and an angle congruent, HA. We have a hypotenuse and an angle congruent, HA. And then finally, we've got a leg and a leg. Not the hypotenuse, because that's across from the right angle. Leg, leg. Okay. So, one of the last things we're going to do, guys, before we uh, wrap up, is I just want to give you guys a chance. So, the directions here I'm not a big fan of. None of these statements are going to have enough to determine that we're congruent. I want you guys to state the additional information needed for one through six here. So, for example, on number one, they're saying we would use hypotenuse and angle. Well, we have an angle. We need H. We need the hypotenuse in order to have HA. You need that and that. So let's go through, guys, and let me know what piece we're missing on 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And go right ahead. All right. So for number 2, we know they share a leg, but we need another leg for LL. Number 3, we've got one side, but we need uh, the hypotenuse if we're going to use hypotenuse leg. Number 4. We've got these vertical angles, but we, if we're going to do LA, we need to know a leg. We need congruent legs. Number five, we've got the hypotenuses are congruent, but we need a leg, too, to be congruent for HL. And then number six, leg angle. We've got a leg, but we need an angle that, that's congruent for both as well. So the last thing today, guys, we're actually going to bust... Uh, in with some algebra skills. You know, I'm an algebra guy at heart, so that's going to involve writing a system of equations. And that kind of sounds scary if you don't really remember us, you know, doing that a whole lot. But check out how this is going to work. We're going to be able to find the values of x and y based off the triangles being congruent, congruent because of the hypotenuse and the leg being congruent. So, in other words, hypotenuse is congruent. And the base leg is congruent. So what we end up with is, looking at the hypotenuse, H, we've got X is going to equal 2Y. That's our first equation. Second one's going to be X minus 4 is equal to Y plus 3. So this is our system, guys. Here's our first equation. Here's our second equation. So how can we solve this system? What would be the step you would do first? Well, if x is equal to 2y, then that x is going to be equal to 2y as well. We can replace that x with 2y and then solve. Subtract y, add 4. You end up with y equals 3 plus 4. y equals 7. And then the easy part comes from when you need to find x. Well, if y equals 7, plug that back in. 2 times 7, x equals 14. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Pretty quick day 8. Don't forget, uh, delta due on Tuesday. Test begins Wednesday. Two big things there, guys. So thank you. If you have any questions, let me know.
Go Jumpers.